two of my most favorite music video effects ever and this one's gonna be way up there on the list. Now we're talking about the picture collage transition or effect that you can only use in music videos but you can also use that in any other type of edit that you just want to spice up a little bit more. And to make things easier for you to navigate around this video, here's a list of all the necessary steps that we have to take to get to the final result alongside with the time codes so feel free to jump around. <laughs> This effect doesn't require you to have a lot, but obviously you need a couple of frames, you need a couple of still images, you need a couple of sound effects, and maybe that's optional, a couple of textures. And if you don't have any of that, I got a special offer for you because I've created this as a pack and this pack contains 10 different frames, 10 different sound effects, seven different textures, as well as 10 pre-built transitions. For everyone watching this video, there will be a 20% discount as you can see on screen right now. First of all, you need a couple of still images. There's two options. Either you're gonna grab some stills from the video you're currently working on, or you have some actual photos taken. In my case, I'm just gonna use a couple of screen grabs. Now, what you would have to do is just navigate to the frame that you wanna export. I'm gonna come over to the color page, right click and grab still, and then I would have to export that still. But what you could also do is navigate to the top left of your screen towards the DaVinci Resolve, then go down to keyboard customization, and in this search bar, just type in current frame as and under file export you can assign a keyboard shortcut in my case it is command and x to export the current frame as a still now that is especially helpful if you've got a lot of stills to grab so i can just navigate to the frame that i want to export let's say this is one right here i'm going to hit command and x this window will pop up and i can just export that image as a tiff jpeg png or whatever let's go with tiff and just hit export that's how you would grab a still more efficiently than just navigating over to the color page so i'm gonna go to my frames and i'm gonna use frame number four i'm just gonna drag that to my timeline like so and i'm gonna navigate to my stills and i'm gonna grab the still number one this right here and i'm just make sure that these are aligning like perfectly and what i want to do now is i'm going to highlight both right click and select new compound clip now the reason i'm doing that is because later on i only have to animate that compound clip instead of the still image as well as the frame individually and with that compound clip selected i want to right click and go to open in timeline now this will bring up the compound clip in its own timeline and what i want to do there is i'm going to go to my still then i'm going to use the inspector zoom and position tools to adjust the image to where I want it to be let's say right here and I maybe want to shift it a little bit to the left then I'm gonna go down towards this cropping and I'm gonna crop the left to just align with the frame and you don't have to be too precise there because the frame is actually blocking where you cut off that edge so you have like the full width of the frame to align that and once that is done I don't want to do any resizing because I want to do the resizing and all of that stuff on the actual compound clip. And now you can see we have the first still. So I'm gonna repeat that process two more times. First of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deactivate the upper two so we only have one that we can work with. And in this case, I'm not gonna use the transform tools that are built into the inspector. Instead, I'm gonna use the transform OFX that's built into your effects library. If you don't know where to find that, just come up to the top left of your screen to where it says effects, click that, come down to where it says open effects and just type in transform and just use the transform tool. You can see that I've already marked that as a favorite so I can always grab it from my favorites library down here and just drag it on my still. Now the reason I'm using the transform OFX is because I'm able to use motion blur on my animation which is in my opinion a crucial part but if you don't want to have motion blur of course you could use the transform tools that are built into the inspector but in this case once again i'm going to use the transform ofx tool. so first of all i'm going to make this a little bit smaller this one should go to the top left so first of all bring this here then i'm going to shift it a little bit more towards the left and I'm gonna pull it up like so. Now, maybe I want this to be rotated a little bit towards the left like that. That is pretty good. Now I'm gonna go over to my still number two, activate that once again, bring in the transform OFX, put that on here, make this a little bit smaller, probably gonna rotate it to the right, make it smaller once again 
like that and then bring it over to the right and just move it up maybe like that it's looking pretty good to me then i'm gonna go to still three once again bring in that transform ofx i'm gonna make this a lot smaller like so i'm gonna bring it down using my decision y like that and maybe a little bit off to the left maybe just a little bit more down like so and then maybe i'm gonna shift this also just a little bit to the right so it's not like perfectly centered First of all, I'm going to come to the start of this still number one and I'm going to use my right arrow key to go forward one and two frames and I'm going to chop the still two to here and from there I want to go forward one, two frames and I'm going to go to still three and I want to chop this off so we have that nice ladder so they come in one after one but still pretty fast. And once you've done that, you want to come to the first still, let me just make this a little bit bigger for you. When I come to the first still, I'm gonna go forward to where the second still comes in, but still with the first still selected. And I wanna set a keyframe on zoom and on rotate. And then I wanna go back to the first frame and I just wanna bring the rotation over to the opposite side ever so slightly like that. And I just wanna make this a little bit bigger like so. And then I wanna increase my motion blur ever so slightly. And you can see what that's doing just blurs the animation just a little bit maybe like that now i want to repeat this step for still number two. First of all i'm gonna go to a point where the still three is coming in i'm gonna set a keyframe on zoom as well as on rotation i'm gonna go back two frames to the start of still two then i'm gonna bring the rotation over to the other side just like that and increase the zoom like so as well as bring in a little bit of motion blur like that. Now that's looking pretty good. Same goes for the next ones. I'm gonna go forward two frames. I'm gonna set a keyframe on zoom and a rotate. I'm gonna go back two frames and I just wanna rotate this to the other side just like so and then bring this up a little bit like that and I'm gonna introduce a little bit of motion blur just like so and now if we play this back this looks a lot better but after they come in they're way too static because they're not moving at all and i don't want to keyframe the movement so i'm just going to use the camera shake that is built into your effects library just come up to the top left corner click on effects then go down to effects and search for camera shake um, might as well be under open effects once again i favorited that so i can just grab it from my favorites down here and I'm just gonna drag this onto all three of them. And if we play this back, all three have the exact same movement because we didn't change any movement in the camera shake, but the shake itself is also a little bit too strong for my liking. So I'm gonna go to still one, go to camera shake, and I'm just gonna bring down the motion scale, but I'm gonna up the speed scale. I'm gonna go to still number two, I'm gonna go to camera shake, I'm gonna bring down the speed scale and I'm gonna bring up the motion scale and on the third one I bring down motion and the speed scale. So alright that's looking pretty good. Um, maybe the first one is moving a little bit too fast so I'm gonna reduce the speed scale a little bit just like that. Yeah, that looks way better. But now we have to add some sound effects to sell this effect a little bit more. So I'm gonna go to my sound effects folder and that's just very basic camera shutter sound effect that I got off of Artlist. I'm gonna look for the first peak, which is right here. And I wanna align that first peak with the start of the first frame. Then I wanna duplicate this sound effect two more times like so. And I wanna align them to still number two and still number three. So I'm just gonna align that peak right there. When I use the same sound effect over and over again, it is good to differentiate them a little bit. So what I like to do is I'm gonna lower the volume to minus eight on the first one around there. I'm gonna lower the volume to minus four on the second one. And on the third one, I don't wanna change any volume at all, but I wanna muffle the sound a little bit and I wanna add a little bit of reverb to that. And to do so, I'm gonna use a free plugin where I will leave a link to that in the description below this video. It's called Soundly Place It and just drag it on top of the third one. First, I'm gonna deactivate the speaker, then I'm gonna 
choose a preset. I'm gonna go to hallway and stairs. Hallway four is where I like to go. Just increase the reverb length a little bit. Then close this, bring this up to around 80 and increase the wall, which adds a little bit of that dampening muffled sound. And this should sound pretty good. All we have to do now is because five seconds for the effect is still way too long, we want that to be short. So I'm gonna highlight all of them and just drag them in. First of all, you wanna right click on the compound clip and select open in timeline. Then you wanna bring up the frame to video layer number three. Then you wanna grab a texture. I like the 19 one a lot. And I'm just gonna bring this in right there. But obviously this texture does not fit the frame. And instead of cropping the texture, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go um, below my viewer and I'm gonna activate this transform tool. If that's not already selected, use the drop down to select the transform tool. And I'm just gonna shift this in. Now I wanna highlight the frame and the texture, deactivate that. I wanna come over to the color page and in my RGB mixer, I wanna select monochrome because I want this to be black and white photos. Then I wanna select my grunge texture. I'm gonna go to composite mode and search for multiply. I'm gonna go to still number two, open in timeline and I wanna bring up the frame. I'm gonna use a different texture this time. I'm gonna use the first one right there. And in this case, I wanna rotate this to 90 degrees, then zoom out and just bring this in like so, like that. I'm gonna go to composite mode and change this to screen. Then I'm gonna deactivate the grunge texture and the frame. I'm gonna go over to my color page and I'm gonna select monochrome. So I'm gonna have a black and white image. And then I'm gonna go back to the edit page activate them. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the last one. Right click, open a timeline, bring up the frame to another video layer. I'm gonna use this texture right there. Just bring it in. I'm just gonna bring in this around here. And on this one, I wanna select overlay and deactivate them both. Go to the color page, select monochrome, bring this back and we'll play this back. This looks a lot better in my opinion. Now let me quickly demonstrate the pack that I've created. So you got all of these 10 different timelines. Each timeline contains a different effect or transition. So I'm just gonna open up the transition number four and you can get a preview of what that's gonna look like. And now all I have to do is I'm gonna right click this compound clip and I'm gonna open in timeline. You can see that there's an empty video layer called footage. And all you have to do is just grab a still, just drag it in right here, just crop the right and crop the left and you're good to go. Let's just make this black and white one more time, monochrome, perfect. Then I wanna go back to film frame transition four. I'm gonna go to this one, open timeline. Here, once again, you got another empty video layer and I'm gonna use still two, just drag that in, just deactivate them both real quick. Come over, make that monochrome activate them. Now I want to select my still. I'm going to crop the right and I'm going to crop the left like so. And I'm going to go back one more time to the next one. Open in timeline. Just bring in the last still right there. Deactivate them both. Come over to the color page, make them monochrome, activate them. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna, first of all, make that a little bit smaller. And I wanna crop the right like this and crop the left like that. Come back here, then highlight everything, copy, then come back to your original editing timeline, paste it in there. And all you have to do now is just move it over a cut where you want this transition to be. Um, let's say wanna transition out of here. So I'm just gonna place it there. And that's pretty much all you have to do. So it's really that easy to create that cool picture collage transition or effect. And now you get all the necessary information that you need to create as many different variations as you want to. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something new. If so, please consider leaving a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Highly appreciate that. And I'm gonna see you next week. And next week's video is gonna be a little bit different than you would usually see on this channel. Now that video is targeted to all the budget gear hats, as I would consider myself to be one. And we're gonna be talking about very, very high quality glass that won't break the bank. So if that's something you're interested in, I'd love to see you there. Otherwise, hope you're having a great day and I'm gonna see you next time. Bye.